Hello everyone and welcome to this Dinkum 22 Things I Wish I Knew guide where we will talk about things I, myself, but also members of the Discord community wish we knew in our first few hours or later in the game. But first let's talk a bit about what Dinkum is. Dinkum is a fairly new early access indie game on Steam that you can play single player but also multiplayer. It is very similar to Animal Crossing with its art style, interacting with the world, etc. And you can also get licenses to do jobs for mining, forging, fishing, but a whole lot more. I have a short list that I came up with myself, and after that one I will show you guys the community suggestions. Some of the things I wish I knew are... Number 1. You can choose in the settings window, mouse always move camera and invert the y-axis to make you play like pretty much all other third person games. I have no idea why this is not the default, um, but yeah, here you go. On number two, you can left click in the map on, on house icon or any of the other icons and pin it to the mini map. This way you will never lose your home again. Number three. You have to build your museum before you can get the greenhouse or any of the other buildings and NPCs in your town. I'm not 100% sure on this, but it seems to be true for a couple of other players too. And we're talking here about permanent residents, not the one day stay kind of NPCs. Alright, and on number four. When you go fishing, and I did a video on this, if you uh, would like to watch that I will uh, show that in the card on the top right corner right now. But on fishing, I have uh, another tip from someone in the comments, actually. Instead of doing it the proper way, you can repeatedly spam left click and your fish will not escape. This is not ideal. It can be uh, a little bit annoying after catching multiple fish. Uh, your finger might, uh, might start to hurt after a while. But it is a way to do it. Your fish will not escape, the line won't break, and you will, uh, yeah, all you have to do is just spam the left click button um, on PC anyway. And I suppose this will work on controller as well for whatever button it is that you use there. On number five, anything that your character can hold above its head with two hands, you can sell at John's shop at the scale. So for example, if you have a beehive, um, that's just one example of the few things you can hold above your head like that. Uh, if you have a beehive, you can go over to John's shop after you build his shop, the, uh, the permanent residence. And then there will be a scale at the entrance. You can throw the item on there and you can sell it. Number six, you do not need to give fruit trees or any other type of tree uh, one tile space around it Usually in games if you don't give them enough space they will not grow or it will uh, take them a lot longer to grow But in this game, it seems that like it's not necessary however uh, For fruit trees it might be a little bit more difficult to harvest them afterwards If you plant uh, a lot of them right next to each other and a final tip that I kind of came up with myself, but also I had a little bit of help from the Discord community. Uh, pressing enter on the keyboard or pressing the down on the down pad on the D-pad for a controller gives you a few different options. First, it gives you a chat option for multiplayer to interact with uh, someone else on the server. It gives you a emote window. That you can use you can for example laugh just like all the npcs do or other kind of emotes and one that's probably most important to um to people playing a single player or multiplayer doesn't matter you can use a whistle to call your animals back to you when they escape and run away so if your chickens for example seem to escape because you accidentally um, because of the weird controls, pick up a fence uh, that's keeping them from escaping. You can press the enter key, uh, hit the whistle, and then they will come running back to you, which is awesome. That is a really helpful little tip there. Alright, and now on to some of the Discord community suggestions. So I asked in the Dinkum Discord community chat, would like to ask everyone about things you wish you knew before playing for a video I'm planning on making. What did you wish you knew in the first few hours? And here are some of the responses. 
from Maya Mouse, we got a response saying, You can farm capture requests, you can turn them in unlimited until time runs out. So if there is a hunt the turkey quest for two days, you can make a ton of traps and just keep on turning them in for the duration of the quest. That seems like a really useful way of making a lot of money. You do need the billboard for this, but that seems uh, that seems really useful. And another one for Mayhem Mouse as well. Don't base or don't plant your base, I suppose, right where the blimp lands. So the advice pretty much here is go and explore first and go slightly inland so that you have slightly more room to grow your town and uh, you're slightly closer to everything else on the map. And that pretty much brings us to the next point from uh, another user, from Cullius. I don't know if I pronounced the name correctly, I'm sorry. Uh, but you can take as long as you need to place your tent. Time starts to roll only after you place your tent. Use that time to explore, familiarize with the island, and maybe even collect some fruits for the next few days. And always cook your fruits before eating them. So yeah, that is a very helpful tip. You can just explore the island. I have not tested this myself, so I do not know if this is uh, correct information, but I'm assuming it is. So uh, yeah, that, that would be a really useful tip if that were, uh, were to be true. And cooking your food is uh, definitely a good tip. Uh, it will give you ab about double the amount of stamina or health that your fruit usually would give you. And uh, any negative effect that they might have will also disappear. So yeah, that's definitely a uh, very good one. And then the next one, also from uh, Cullius, about the metal detector and level 2 license. Uh, that every single money earning method is uh, decrypted. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. I'm sorry. <laughs> as soon as you get a metal detector. Um, and metal detector itself is decrypted once you get level 2 license. Now for people who don't know this, the metal detector is very useful. You can uh, detect metals, as the name says, in the dirt. And you can dig it up with a shovel. And those materials give you uh, a good amount of money if you sell them. I personally am not a big fan of the metal detecting way of making money uh, because it takes quite a bit of time for me personally and it's quite boring to me. However, uh, it does indeed earn a whole lot of money if you are getting lucky with the amount that you can find in the ground. Uh, I would recommend going by rivers. Rivers seem to be a good place to start. And a level 2 license, I believe that that gives you like a, a site that goes through the earth. So you can uh, see a couple of different items or like barrels hidden in the dirt even without holding the metal detector. I don't have this upgrade myself so I cannot show you this unfortunately. But yeah, another great way of uh, making a ton of money it seems. And then another tip from Coolius. Uh, explore during thunderstorms or the day after. Thunder X may drop at random and I believe this is only where thunder strikes the earth. So yeah, if you see a thunderstorm, if you see a thunder striking the earth somewhere, come back the next day and uh, make sure you're not missing out on those thunder eggs because they are worth a lot. And then a suggestion from someone else from the Discord community. Uh, this person is uh, called Grim. And this person suggests beehives drop from trees when you chop them down. That is very true. Uh, that is of course an example that I kind of gave earlier about uh, having things on, uh, on two hands uh, that you can sell at the John's shop. But yeah, beehives can drop from trees when you chop them down. And those are a really good way of making a lot of money. Each beehive is like worth approximately 10,000 depending on the weight. It might be more, it might be a little bit less. Uh, but yeah, really good way of making extra cash. Then a message from the user Flair on Discord. Um, he has a couple of suggestions, four of them. The first one is drop throw button on controller is L3 or the left joystick or pressing the left joystick and on keyboard that will be pressing Q. Number two, changing the view with R3 which is uh, pressing the right joystick or on keyboard it is Z, Z or whatever you want to call it. 
Number three from this little list is uh, when campfires set you on fire, go into the water. Yeah, that is very true. I have walked into the campfires more than once. And um, water, of course, puts it out. If you walk into the river, it will go out. But also the rain. After a couple of seconds standing in the rain, it will also go out. And number four from Flare. You can plant seeds and fruits by digging a hole, throw the seed or fruit in and put the dirt back on top. Now everybody should already know this because they obviously have watched my video on that as well, which I will uh, also put, put in the cards on the top right, or I will uh, link it later after this video is done, or maybe down below in the comments, who knows? Just check them all out. Yeah, and then, and then another one from Flair, so actually it was five. John's shop is closed at Sundays, so get items or sell them on Saturday. That is really important, yeah indeed. Uh, John's shop does close on Sundays, so if you have anything you want to sell or anything you want to buy that you will need on Sunday, definitely go and get them on Saturday or the day before. And yeah, time management is in general very important for the game. Especially early on when you only have a limited amount of uh, NPCs visiting the island for, uh, for, for one day. And then another comment from someone who would like to be anonymous. Um, no saving in the daytime. You can only save the game by sleeping to the next day. And no pausing in the game. Um, this is only except for a loading screen after sleeping. The little uh, in-between screen where your skills show up and all that. Another user, uh, Knings. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, that user said... You can saw tin to make sheets with the table saw and smelt the sheets to make tin using the furnace or the smelter. And those were all the uh, things I and the Discord community wish we knew before we started playing the game. I would love to do another video like this. So if you have something that you wish you knew before playing the game that I have not listed here in this video already, please do let me know down below in the comments. I would very much appreciate it so I could make another video and inform more, more players about these kind of uh, awesome mechanics and useful information. I hope this video was helpful to you all. If it was, then please don't forget to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. And please do let me know if you want a guide video about something. Hope you all have a wonderful day and good luck in the game.